So this week, remember last week I spoke to you about why I've bought some Olympus gear? Well, here it all is. And this week, the dream, the aim, is to photograph a dragonfly or a damselfly, okay? So I've been practicing my technique, shot these spiders and this beetle that I found. Um, and I have to say, using this Olympus stuff is so much easier than the Z7 for macro. Absolutely different class. Handhold or handheld, um, it's just so easy. So, so happy with the gear choice. And today, I've come to a piece of woodland that I discovered and I've used what three words. Now you may have heard me say about what three words before. I've used it for trees in woodland to try and find myself, get myself back to, to things that I like to, that I've seen when I'm out walking. But what happens in woodland is often it's the light that attracts me. Uh, and when I go back to the same spot, I can't see anything. This one's a bit different because it still may prove to be unsuccessful, but when I came here before, there were there was groups of this woodland where there were loads and loads of, dra of damselflies flying about. And I've come out really early. So this is just after sunrise. I got a little bit, took a wrong turn in, but this is just after sunrise. It's dewy, it's wet, it's kind of cold for this time of year. And when it's cold, insects can't move very much because they're cold blooded. So what I'm hoping to do is to find one on some leaves or on some bits of fern. So I'm gonna take myself to the what three words location where there were loads flying about and have a good look around. Not hopeful, um, but I've made everything as, I put everything in my favor as much as I can by getting up early and getting out of here and marking it off. So we're gonna have a go. And the dream is to get a picture of a damselfly or a dragonfly on a leaf. Wish me luck. Right, the place I want to search is about 20 metres away and it's kind of by a little stream which is a good place for dragonflies and damselflies. It's a bit um, damp and there were loads here but this was a bit sunny so I wonder whether they were attracted by that bit but I'm going to have a look round. Settings, by the way, I've kind of worked out um, where well, I'm going to start with 50th of a second because the flash has to, um, can't be faster than that, otherwise, we're going to get the shutter in the way. So, 50th of a second, which is the flash sync speed on this camera, um, f5.6, 400 ISO, and 132 power on the flash. Right, here I am. Let's have a look around in this lovely bracken. So I found this moth, which is not a dam damselfly, but to be honest, I think this is going to be really difficult. So I'm going to photograph this anyway. If nothing else, at least it'll get my exposure right. So let's have a little play with this. So I've got my little diffuser, which also works as a reflector in bright light. Uh, pull it out to show you. There it is. <laughs> wow, this is not easy. Um, the actual photography side of it is all right, although 
this keeps falling off the lens, it's a bit of a pain. I might have to get one of the uh, diffusers that fits over the flash gun because it just makes it so much easier. It gives you a hand free. It's not too bad, it does work though. Um, so we'll give it a try, but the hard thing about this is finding the insects. I mean, they're well hidden. I've seen a couple of snails which I've tried to have a go out. I've adjusted my exposure a little bit, so I've gone up to 800 ISO because they looked a little bit dark. So. Um, just tweaking things, it's an experiment, but it's certainly not easy. And you've got this huge, great wood. Where are they? Where do they sleep? Where's the hotel? Uh, I think this is just a game of perseverance. Keep looking, something will happen. Beautiful place to be though. I mean, come on. It smells wonderful. These pine forests are really, really nice. Well, as you can see, the sun's up now. Um, haven't found any. I don't really think I'm going to hang about here anymore. I think I might come back again tomorrow. So um, maybe join me for that. But what I'm going to do now is I'll take you back into Lightroom and I'll just show you how to focus stack these guys. I know I choose one of the spider pictures. Uh, I'll put them into Lightroom, correct them, whack them into Photoshop. I'll let me talk you through that now. Right, so here we are in Lightroom. Um, I've I found this lovely old spider. Um, looks a bit prickly. And these are a selection of images that I took with the Olympus at a 40th of a second F5 ISO 400. I've got obviously a little bit of flash, which doesn't show you there. Um, and what I look for in a focus stack, well, this one I've chosen obviously especially, but the first thing to do is to zoom in. And what I'm looking for in each of these files is to make sure that something that I want in focus is in focus. So this particular first one, look at these lovely legs, um, just not quite anything else, but that's worth having for that. Otherwise that's going to be out of focus. The next one, so we can see this is now too close. The focus is now shifted down a fraction. So we've now got the main bit of the spider and the bits there. But the legs at the front are out of focus. But that one there, look. So we've now got those legs. Yeah, that's pretty good. And the, just the ends are out of focus. But you can see how the focus is moving down there. And then this one got right on the end here. That little bit there, definitely. Not sure I need any more than that one. Let's have a quick look at this. Yeah, I don't need that one because there's nothing there in focus that interests me. So we're not going to worry about this number number six. I'm just going to remove that from the collection. So here we go then. So to do this in Photoshop, I'll do this in Lightroom. What you can do if you want to is adjust the color, the crop, anything like that. But I'm going to crop all of this at the end. I'm going to do all the, all of that stuff at the end. Um, hold shift, hold down the first one, and this will now um, select the whole lot. And now what we do is we right click and we go to editing. Now, this is the important bit. Don't go straight into Photoshop because you'll have to move these yourself and blend them yourself. Photoshop will do this for you. And the way we do that is we go down to open as layers in Photoshop. So Photoshop will now open, let's get that up for you. And if you look on the right hand side here, you can see the layers. These are the layers coming in. Photoshop is just putting these in in order. It doesn't know what I want to do with them yet. It's just loading them up as a, as a layer. Now I could hand blend those, so that's finished now, but I'm not going to do that because again, Photoshop will do this for me. Hold shift, hold the bottom one, and then the edit menu, click on edit, and then we go down to auto align layers. And what that is going to do, and we've got a different choices of projections here, I always go for auto. Um, I click on OK. I have tried others, but it doesn't work as well most of the time. So what it's now going to do is going to detect the main subject, which is pretty obvious in this. 
and it's going to make sure that that is lined up one over the top of the other. You can see just on here, the little kind of checkerboard bits is where it's had to move it slightly. This is how much I was shaking when I was photographing it. That done, I now go to edit, auto blend layers. Obviously the choice is otherwise you can blend them yourself, but why would you? And obviously we haven't got a panoramic. We're going to stack them. It shows you what it is on the picture. It's going to put all of those stacked images together to make one. I have content aware fill ticked and seamless tones and colors ticked just to give us every help. We can click OK and that will now blend those. So it's just going to do that. And lo and behold, here will come and there's the finished image. So ignore these bits around the side here because it's going to try and fill those in, but I'm going to crop it anyway. So we're just going to zoom in a little bit and we'll have a little look at what we've got. And if we look, all of those things that I looked at are now in focus. I wondered about that bit there, but actually I think that's okay. So that looks pretty, pretty scary, <laughs> but fine. So all I do now is click on file, save, and then once that's saved, it will then be ready for me to look at. I'm just waiting for it to do that. And it'll be ready for me to look at in Lightroom when I can do the rest of, if I can close this now, and open back up. And there it will be. And there's the actual finished picture. Because if you remember, we had five before. And now we have six. Look at that. Fantastic. I can obviously... Now adjust the crop, I can adjust the colour, I can do any tweaking that I want to tweak. Um, but to be honest, I'm not that worried really. Um, I can go in the develop module actually, which is probably where I'd normally be sat. Uh, and this looks to me like it needs to have a one-to-one -one crop. So we'll do that and we'll come in a little bit closer. Quite like the greens around the outside, it gives it a bit of sense of where it is. And there we go. And then what I could also then do is put it back into Photoshop to give it a border, do any cloning, etc, etc. And there we have it. I hope you've enjoyed that. So I'd said my goodbyes and put all the cameras away in the bag and I was just on my way back to the car when all of a sudden I spotted two dragonflies which flew in front of me. And these were in exactly the same spot and I'd marked on what three words a couple of days earlier. So they were still around and they tended to be in that bracken there, which I obviously didn't go into. But um, one of the dragonflies was landing on the end on the stalk of this dead flower, dead plant, and it kept going round and coming back and it was kind of warming up for the day. It was obligingly slow enough for me to photograph it several times. <laughs> I was really pleased. I was trying to get up above it, but unfortunately right in front of me is a little ditch, so I couldn't get any higher than that. So several different exposures, several different compositions. I'll put all of those and all the other pictures from the day on the end of this video. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed that. Join me next week when I'll be testing out the high resolution aspect of the Olympus camera to see how it compares against the Z7 II. So yeah. until next time, thanks ever so much for tuning in. Take care, enjoy the images. Goodbye.